the history of St. John Lateran you know, with its ecumenical councils, with its, with, with the, as the Cathedral of Rome, it's, it has a very, very, very dense, dense history. And that decoration very much reflects the vicissitudes of not only the church in the sense of the building, but really in the church in the greater sense as well. The beauty of St. John Lateran is the idea that the triumph that we're celebrating is the battle that made Rome Christian. And the only people who ever died to make Rome Christian, they were Christians. And this is the triumph of the witness of the martyrs. That church is the triumph of the men and women who threw themselves at that Roman machine for centuries, centuries, bearing witness to Christ, bearing witness the truth of the Gospels, until finally, 313, an emperor listened and allowed them to build a church. I mean, it is, it is a unique victory in the ancient world. When you read Eusebius, who describes uh, the building of this church, he was alive during the last major persecution, the persecution of Diocletian, which began around 301. And this was the persecution that was supposed to be the definitive one. He was going to smoke out and rid the world of Christians. So Eusebius was, was alive uh, on the run during that persecution. He lives long enough to see Diocletian's persecution fall to see Constantine rise, the legalization of Christianity and the, and, and, and the construction of the first, first church in the world. I and mean, when he writes about it, he writes with this, this sense of, of, of this jubilance, which is just wonderful to listen to. And I think that that's the feeling we're supposed to feel when we walk into that church, that reminder that no matter how dark, dim things are, the church, it will always get up, it will always keep going, it will always triumph.